here is a snarky mom from Idaho. Now, I, I need to point out that Jensie wrote that, actually. But she recently started her own business. Please welcome Jensie White Simpkins. Now, I have been born, I was born a cynic, and I probably will continue to be a cynic for my entire life. But recently, I've tried to be a little more optimistic, especially for my own kids and my own sanity. Um, I titled this talk, How I Lost My Cynicism Without Losing My Fucking Edge, hoping that saying the F word would make me seem edgy, but I, I don't know if I still have an edge or not. We all know that cynicism is a big problem in our society. We know that we should be more optimistic, and it's easy to slide into a very cynical worldview, considering some recent events, and events that just keep perpetuating. I'm here to argue that a more positive outlook on life is not that far away from a cynical view. George Carlin said that if you scratch any cynic, you'll find a disappointed idealist. And I believe that, because cynics know there's a better way that it can be done. They're just either too lazy to do it themselves, or they run into too much red tape and they don't want to try anymore. So I'm going to talk to you about five ways that I lost my cynicism. Well, some of it. Um, first, I had kids. They take everything out of you, and they kind of drain every um, last instinct that you have. So. Um, I work really hard to make the world a better place for them because I'm not going to be around here forever. But they, and they aren't going to be around here forever, but they will perpetuate. I wouldn't want to send my kids into a world thinking that they couldn't make a difference, and so I try and model for them ways that I'm making a difference for them so that they can feel like they can make a difference too. See, look at Asher, he's already making a difference, you're smiling just because of his cute face. Um, the second thing that I did that has really helped me contain some of my uh, uh, cynicism is working with good organizations and volunteering and putting some good things out into the community. Um, when you do things like that, you see the bigger picture and you meet a lot of people who believe in making the world a better place. These are some of the nonprofits that I work with. Reach is a great place in Lansing. Um, this is my shameless plug for Give Camp, which is in March of next year. We match developers with nonprofits for development and web work. And again, it's just a great way to meet new people and get skills and do things that you wouldn't normally do, which I'll talk about later. Um, the third thing that I did was seek out some more positive people. This is my husband, Tyrell. He's an unfailing optimist and drives me crazy sometimes. Um, but being with him and being with people that are more positive tends to rub off on you, where being around cynical negative people also tends to rub off on you. Speaking of which, I think I'm starting to rub off on him a little bit, but it could be the PhD program. <laughs> the next thing that I do still, and I'm doing it right now, is I do things that make me really uncomfortable so that I can get side outside of myself and learn new things and try some new things. So um, I played roller derby, which um, was also a little nerve wracking. Um, I've done a couple triathlons, which made me way more nervous than this, as I kept telling myself today. Um, the anxiety of trying something new and the potential for embarrassment just makes you grow a little bit, I think. Um, so that's, that's that one. Um, number five is to keep some perspective. I have been very lucky in my life, and I have a lot of good people around me and a good support system, and I've also been in worse situations. Like tomorrow morning, I have to go to the dentist, which is way worse than this. So um, I try to keep all the good things in my life in perspective and realize that there are bad things out there and there are bad people, but I have been surrounded by really good people and I've had a lot of good opportunities. The last tip that I will give you as a bonus out of the five, we have another one, is to never ever read the internet comments. Just don't. <laughs> flooding back if you just read any of those comments, so just skip them. Um, so I'm going to review really quickly. Uh, the first thing that I did was I had some kids, and you can do that or you can spend some time with kids and at least realize why you don't have any. Uh, get involved. Do something outside of yourself. Number three, surround yourself with good people, people who are maybe better than you, um, people that you can laugh with and show you the good things in the world. Uh, number four, if I can get to the next slide, is to um, try something new. You don't necessarily have to stand up in front of people or sing 80s songs at an 80s party, but there are lots of other ways that you can try something new. 
And number five is to be sure to keep everything in perspective because you're gonna have bad days, you're gonna have worse days, but there's always something better. And remember to never read the comments. <laughs> Thank you, Jensi. That concludes our first half. We're going to have a brief intermission, uh, about 15 minutes. Let's just check the time. Okay, so we'll probably start around 8.25. There's uh, restrooms out this door over there. Uh, feel free to mingle. I'll meet some people, and uh, we'll get started in uh, 15 minutes. Thanks.